I am here to share with you about the exciting tool, Positive Intelligence. As you know, I've got session open right now. Enrollment is open for PQ, which is a great way to finish out your year strong, to amplify, power up for conversations, perhaps with your manager. It can help with family. There's so many, so many benefits to it. I'll share the ins and outs of it with you. PQ is a mental of mental fitness. And what that means is how your brain, how your brain defaults when a challenge or something unexpected comes your way, which is going to happen daily. Uh, does your brain default to I can't, or does it default to I can? So as we go throughout our time together today, I want to share all the exciting details with you and help you make an informed decision uh, regarding what I hope you'll you'll come to know as one of the best training programs available to help silence self-doubt, increase innovation, and grow grit. And you can think about this through the lens of your of yourself as an individual and also for teams. It's very powerful for teams. So mental fitness, by definition, is your capacity to respond to life's challenges with a positive rather than a negative mindset. Anything from your technology didn't work to some bigger things, some more significant things. And when you do that, it's got phenomenal impacts on your performance at work, peace of mind and wellness, which we all like, right? And, and healthy relationships. And it's based on, it's built on a foundation of research in these four categories, positive psychology, neuroscience, cognitive psychology, and performance science. So it is very science driven, very science driven. And we'll go through this today. It also comes from the brilliant work of a man named Shirzad Shemaine, who has worked with hundreds of CEOs and their executive teams, Stanford students, world-class world class athletes, and over 500,000 participants from 50 countries. So the, a lot of the research is summarized in the book, Positive Intelligence, and you'll hear nuggets of that today. So the underlying premise of the positive intelligence program and why it's one of my favorite tools in my coaching toolkit is because of its simplicity. It's based on a foundation of factor analysis and root causes. Does anybody remember factoring in an algebra class? I think it was an algebra class, how we took a complex equation and we made it simple. You know, we as humans with our thoughts, with our emotions, we're complex equations ourselves. Are we not? And when we make things simpler, they get easier. So radical simplification is one of the ways that this tool, it's an effective means of taking something complex and making it simpler. And you can think about the example of this when we apply it to colors. Uh, as we all know, at the root of millions of colors are only three factors or three colors, right? And we all know the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. Well, similarly, when you look at positive intelligence, there are three core mental fitness muscles that each of us has. There's the saboteur interceptor, there's the sage muscle, and there's the self-command muscle. And I'll break these down today. And when we consciously, when we intentionally break our challenges down through the lens of these three muscles, they become simpler. It's easier, easier, let's make up new words sometimes, easier to navigate and we feel better, we feel lighter, and we stay in forward motion with ease. So let's start with the saboteur interceptor. And any, any questions so far? So I really want to make sure you're getting, okay, you're tracking with me? Great. All right, so your saboteur interceptor. Let me introduce you to your main saboteur. Here comes the judge. Uh, Raise your hand if you have ever fallen prey. Tell me, tell me if you can relate to any of these to being your own worst critic, for example. Or has anybody <laughs> has anybody suffered from perfectionism or the curse of perfectionism? Yours truly. Or maybe for you, it's overthinking. Have you ever just been like, oh my gosh, if my thoughts would just stop spinning? Or people pleaser. Well, guess who was responsible for that? Because I'm here to tell you that it was not you. It was not you on your best and highest day, my friend. It was your judge. The judge is the name of the primary saboteur. And the judge actually takes on nine different personas. And I'll think you, I think that you will find this fascinating and maybe some of them will even be familiar. 
So the saboteur voices that show up as self-doubt, which everybody has, no matter what level of confidence, we all have self-doubt. They have names. There's nine names. And when you learn the names, there's such beauty, such value, such freedom in this, because it gives you two very important things, A, awareness, and B, vocabulary, so that you can separate yourself from the voice, get out from under his or her spell, and then move forward, move forward. So the saboteur voices, our primary ones are the controller, the hyperachiever, restless, synonymous with procrastinator, Stickler, synonymous with perfectionist. We've got the pleaser, hypervigilant, avoider, victim, and hyperrational. Now, some of these won't resonate very much with you, and, and some will. There are usually about three that fall at the, at the top of your list. And like I said, it's not a matter of do we or do we not have these. We do. But the only way that they win is without our awareness or our ability to do anything. And once you hear it, and this is really key, and, and Sandra, like you mentioned in taking the, the, the test, I imagine, did that, did that alone increase some awareness for you about, oh, I can hear that. I can hear those voices a little bit more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's, that's part of the power of this is that, you know, some people go through life and they never hear it. They feel it, but they don't hear it. And once you hear it, it's so exciting because that's when you can steer it. Also, if you know me, you know I'm a fan of rhyming. Once you name it, you can tame it. So, you know, stickler, synonymous with perfectionist, for example, that's one that I identify with. And what this tool allows me to do is when I'm frustrated or stuck or I'm just in a situation, I'm like, ah, why can't this be easier? With this awareness, I can take a step back and be like, okay, wait a minute. Is this you, Jamie, on your highest and best, well-rested, well-fed, not stressed out day, or is this your perfection, your, excuse me, your stickler talking? And then I can go, oh, okay, yes, it's my stickler. And when I do that, I can get out of my own way. And I can also be playful with this and have a little fun with it and not take myself so seriously. And that alone helps me step into forward motion. Does that make sense? I'm tracking on this. And for a lot of us, some of these voices, they've been playing like a soundtrack on repeat for so long that we don't even hear them anymore. And that's what's exciting about this is that you'll not only hear them, but you'll be able to turn them into something that you can use, that you can work with in your sage voices, which I'll talk about in a second, help you with that. So, so real quick here, when I'm learning something new, I always like to associate it with something that I already know. And so I have fictional characters that I associate each of these saboteur voices with, and I'll, I'll share a few of them with you. So the controller, for example, anybody identify with controller? The other thing I like about this is that these words are, they're exactly what they say they are. There's no hidden meaning behind them. So it's pretty easy to, to remember or to know. Uh, I think of Lucy and Peanuts, right, as the controller. It was Lucy's way. She was not a delegator. I mean, she wouldn't even give the football to poor Charlie Brown, right? Like it was all hers. And that's, that can be very stressful to have that level of grip and control. The hyperachiever. Anybody identify with this one? The hyperachiever? The hyperachiever definitely gets things done. And that's what's, that's what can be a little interesting sometimes about these voices is that they do serve as a strength to a certain threshold and then over that threshold, that's when they're inhibiting you. Because hyperachievers, you achieve a lot, <laughs> right? You get stuff done. I mean, people follow your lead. But then comes a point where the achievement becomes almost the obsession. And you might start to compromise some other things in your life that are important. So anybody know anybody know this character or what this movie, Miranda Priestly, right from the Devil Wears Prada? She sure achieved a lot, but at what cost was it? She barely knew her kids. She was mean to her coworkers. So there's that threshold. I'll share, I'll, I'll share this one in detail and then I'll just, I'll show you a few of the other ones. The restless voice, this is the one that has a hard time distinguishing between busy and productive, at least consciously. If uh, procrastination has ever plagued you, that's likely your restless voice that's in there. Uh, who knows who this guy is? Yep, we've got Michael Scott, right, from The Office. 
there were how many seasons, how many episodes of the off? I mean, hundreds. Did you ever see Michael Scott complete a task? Ever. <laughs> In any one of those episodes? No. Well, that's restless. So I have fictional characters for each of these. Uh, in the in the training itself, I do a deeper dive, but we've got Monica from Friends as the stickler, C-3PO as a pleaser, George Costanza from Seinfeld. I mean, how many awkward situations did George get into because he was overthinking? Poor Charlie Brown as the avoider, Eeyore as the victim, and then Spock as hyper-rationale. So again, these voices, they're not... The awareness of these voices is not intended to judge you yourself, but it's to create the awareness. Uh, and I'm curious if anyone associates with Stickler, did you already notice that the grid lines and the images on this screen don't align exactly? They're not symmetrical. Anybody notice that? <laughs> well, the Stickler and me noticed that as well. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to leave this in here as an example of not losing the greater value of everything that is here because one tiny little, honestly, no big deal detail is off. That's that's an example of how, how you get out of your own way. And if there is an area of your life or areas of your life personally or professionally where you're experiencing a little resistance or you maybe you even feel like you're carrying a weight around, like this should be easier. I should be able to move through this faster chances are it's one or a combination of your saboteurs that are holding on like sandbags to a hot air balloon. And what's so wonderful about this is that when you release those sandbags, that, that my friends is when you get to soar. And that's why we're here, right? We're not put on this planet to play small and play beneath ourselves. We're here to play big and to soar. And that's how, that's how you release some of that so that you can step in to your full potential. Everybody tracking with me? Okay, see the heads nodding. Great. So I know some of you have taken taken the second level of this that identifies your saboteurs. Uh, positive intelligence is brilliant in creating this assessment for you, so you don't have to guess which saboteurs have the highest tight or have the have the tightest grip on you. You can very clearly see which ones they are, and with that awareness, you become empowered to hear them in the moments when they're trying to stand in your way and move them out of your way. You have a better opportunity to intercept them when you're maybe experiencing an amygdala hijack or ideally even before that. So there are 10 saboteur voices and there are five sage powers. I'll get into those in a second. And you can generate success quite honestly with either one with a saboteur voice or a sage voice. But what happens is with your saboteurs when they're in the lead, they're leading from a negative state from anger, from frustration, from fear. And it causes a downward spiral. And each and every time those saboteurs are in the lead, your possibilities get smaller and your perceived challenges get bigger. Whereas when you've got your sage powers in the lead, you are in command and control and you achieve success as well as feeling happy about it. You can celebrate a win and, and dare I suggest, pause to relax and actually take some time, take a moment of, of downtime to recognize that. So they lead to further motivation and an overall lighter feeling like you're not carrying around a weight. It sounds pretty good, doesn't it? To have the sage powers in the lead. Yeah. So the question often comes up, but aren't negative emotions good for you? Don't they protect you from things? Is that cross anybody's mind? And, and the question I would like to, to rebuttal to this one is, well, is pain good for you? right? Is pain good for you? And the answer to that is it is for a second or two because it alerts you that something is wrong and to get out of the way. But staying in that negative emotion, it hurts your ability to see clearly, maybe to respond with empathy, curiosity, creativity, some of the other sage characteristics. And you can think about a negative emotion as a saboteur. Ultimately, it prevents your progress and we don't want that to happen. So those are the saboteurs and the saboteur interceptor, your core fitness muscle, that helps you create the awareness so that you can move through and past it. Now that brings us to your second core fitness muscle, and that's your sage muscle. So the sage, it lives in the region of the brain that is also associated with positive emotions, with peace and calm and serenity. 
where you have a clear headed focus. When was the last time you were in your zone at like working on something? You're like, oh my gosh, so creative, so innovative. You lose track of time and maybe, you know, it's an alert, an alarm or something that jostles you back into the present moment. You are in sage mode. Creativity, like I said, and bigger picture. This is where you can rise above the details, you know, see the, the forest and the trees, so to speak. And how much of a better day do you think you have when your sage is in the lead? much, much better. So the sage perspective is that every outcome, every outcome or circumstance can be turned into a gift and or an opportunity. That there's always another step. There's always something that you can do to move forward. And full disclosure here, a little asterisk on this. You might be thinking, well, yeah, Jamie, but what about extreme circumstances? There's always extreme circumstances. You're like, how could you possibly turn that into a gift or an opportunity. And speaking from personal experience without going into great detail on this, I've been through one of those worst nightmare extreme circumstances. And I had therapy and EMDR and some wacky things to try and get through it. And nothing was helping me move the needle until I found this tool. And it helped me. It took a little extra work to get there, but I am a living upright testament that this does work. And thankfully, it's not extreme situations where this needs to apply. Would you agree that your normal everyday challenges at work or at home, when you're looking at it through the sage perspective, you'll be able to flip those obstacles into opportunities when you say to yourself, what would it look like for this to move forward? What would it look like if this were an opportunity, right? And that's part of how you shift shift your mindset. So there's five sage perspectives. There's the empathize power, there's explore, there's investigate, there's navigate, and there's activate, one of my personal favorites. And inside the training, we go into a much deeper dive on this. So my question for you, friends, is which perspective is true? The saboteur says, this is bad. The sage says, this is a gift. Which one do you think is true? I was going to say they're both true, depending on your mood. (laughs) Exactly. Right. Whichever you believe, whichever you choose. Yeah. Sandra, I was going to say the exact same. (laughs) It's true. And it takes this heightened awareness. It almost takes uh, giving yourself permission to see it that way. And think about this, too, from a perspective, not just you as an individual, but your entire team. Think about if your entire team is locked into a saboteur mindset versus a sage mindset, what the compound effect of that could be. I mean, it creates wildly different trajectories, one in a negative tailspin and another in a virtuous cycle of creativity, innovation, and motivation. Like imagine if you, if you put two teams against each other and one had saboteur perspective and one had sage, no matter what the task is, which team would win? Sage, yep. Sage, 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 Maria says, yep, I agree. All right, so that brings us to the the third of your three core fitness muscles, self-command. You know, how do you increase your ability to intercept your saboteurs and call on your sage powers to step into positive action? Because this does take a little bit of practice, but it is so simple, my friends, so simple. How you do this is by taking trips to the PQ gym. And that can be as short as 10 second reps. These are small ways to pump your own brakes throughout your day. I mean, have you ever noticed sometimes that you drive your car more compassionately than you drive yourself? You pump the brakes of your car. You stop and you fill it up with fuel. Sometimes you take it to the spa, also known as the upgraded car wash. Can you imagine what would happen if you drove your car full throttle, like you sometimes do yourself, I mean, your car would break down. And our breakdowns, personal breakdowns, don't show up quite as obviously as a car's, but they manifest as unclear thoughts or being unable to make decisions or becoming frustrated easily. So with PQ reps, you can get into the headspace of creativity. Now on the PQ app, which you'll have access to through the training program, There are PQ gym sessions, and they last anywhere from two minutes to up to about 10 minutes. Uh, But right now, I invite you to do a few PQ reps with me. 
very simple ones, starting with everybody just take a deep breath. Take a deep, intentional breath. Can you just, I mean, that little bit, right? That intentionality creates some calm and some peace. Here's another one. So simple. Go ahead and rub two fingers together in such a way that you can feel your fingerprints. Rub two fingers together in such a way that you can feel your fingerprints. I've got tons of examples of these. I'll, I'll stop at these two for today. But did you notice that while you're focused on the sensation of touch, you weren't thinking about saboteurs. You weren't thinking about anything negative. What the PQ reps do is they help you drop out of your head and into your body. And when you do that, it's like creating a little reboot. And that's the power of the self-command muscle. And the more you do it, like any muscle that you flex, the more you do it, the easier it becomes, the stronger you become, and the faster you're able to do it. And that brings me to the simplicity of this operating system. Part of the beauty of this is how simple it is in execution and powerful in payoff. So the system suggests, hey, if you're feeling a negative, negative emotion, stop, pause. Don't necessarily, it's not telling you stop feeling that emotion, but it's saying stop and create awareness. Notice that you're in saboteur mode. Do some PQ reps to quiet the saboteurs, to activate Sage. Assume that Sage perspective of how can I turn this into a gift, an opportunity, a next step, and then generate that gift or that next step by us using the Sage powers. Like empathy, curiosity are some of the ones I showed you on the previous screen. You need not suffer any longer nor impact those around you negatively when it's not you, it's just your saboteurs who are taking over. So now the question becomes, is it really possible to just shift from saboteur to sage response, even in tough challenges? Is that really possible? Yeah, I see heads nodding and it is. The speed and the depth of the shift depends on your mental muscle strength. And we're getting down to the details of Savannah of what you had asked for earlier. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you've ever left a conference or a webinar like this and you're super fired up and you're ready to make all these changes. And then you get back to your office, or you get back home and the same old routines take over and you lose momentum, right? We've all done that. Lasting positive change requires a combination of two things. One, the insight, the knowledge, but two, it's the mental muscle. It's, it's the repetition of it. Repetition is the mother of mastery. So success with PQ requires initial intense practice, 15 minutes per day for six to eight weeks is what is recommended. And rest assured, you don't even need to do it in the same 15 minute window. It can be a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there, three or five minutes here. And that quickly adds up to 15 minutes per day, which is very doable even for the busiest of schedules. <laughs> Okay, so that brings us to the details of the positive intelligence experience. So it's eight weeks in duration. The program is eight weeks in duration. You've got seamless teachings and actions, which are hosted, here we go, on your personalized PQ app. I love this app. I use it daily. I have used it for years. It never gets old. Little trips to the PQ gym make a huge difference. In your eight-week program, you'll also be released one hour video per week, led by Shirzad Shemaine, the brilliant mind behind this himself. It'll invite you to do 15 minutes per day of practice on the app. You'll have a weekly discussion with your pod, and then an audio and an e-version of the phenomenal book, Positive Intelligence, is yours on the app. And then you'll have live support from your PQ coach. That's me. It's a very comprehensive program, incredibly impactful and powerful. I say this with the utmost of sincerity and authenticity. I would not be upright <laughs> if it were not for this tool. And you don't even need an extreme situation like that. Like I mentioned the experience of Shelby. Maria, you asked for other examples. I mean, I can tell you over and over again about messages that I get that it was like, Jamie, guess what? My pleaser got out of the way. <laughs> and I was able to say no today. I was able to create a boundary. My hypervigilant didn't overthink something. Actually, I left the meeting and it isn't until right now that I've thought about it again, right? So much, so much freedom in that. So it's a hugely powerful tool, my friends, your investment for this. 
Typically it's $14.97, but I'm so excited about this and I want you to have access to it. So I'm using wholesale pricing on this, on this round. So it's $9.97 which I can assure you is much cheaper than therapy or coaching. <laughs> and it includes all of the above plus additional bonuses, which will be announced closer to the, the date when we start. And you may want to check with your employer because they oftentimes will reimburse the expense for this. Program logistics kickoff. We start the week of October 16th. Uh, the first weekly video will be released. The program opens I will, I will give you a tour of the app so you know exactly where and how to find everything. The deadline to register is Thursday, October 12th, or when spots fill. I'm limiting this to a very small group because I, it's very important to me to give you the personalized attention. So I don't know exactly when spots will fill, but at a maximum, it'll, registration will be open until the 12th. To register, I'll have a QR code here for you on a, a future screen. That's the official website to register. Uh, if you still have questions and you want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me, I welcome the opportunity to talk to you. And that's the link to my calendar. You'll, you'll have a copy of these slides. And please know that space is limited. All right, two more slides. Just a friendly reminder. There are 10 saboteurs. There are five sage powers. So this does take a little bit of exercise, but I am telling you it is exercise that has an immediate payoff. Like, have you ever regretted going to the gym? You ever regretted that? I haven't. <laughs> I've regretted not going. I've never regretted going. So I highly encourage you to consider this, uh, to commit to it, even sign up today. There's a QR code if you want to go ahead and register. I thank you so much for your time. I hope this served, purpose fulfilled the goal of a high-level overview. I would love to hear your questions. What questions do you have for me? Hey, um, I could pop on and ask one question. Oh, I, I couldn't see it. Somebody else talking. Um, when you send out the slides to us, you're going to send us out the link. If we do choose to register, we could do it that way as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, I, I figured. I was just making sure because I didn't know if I would grab the QR code in time, but we'll get it all. Okay. No, perfect. you're driving. Yeah, I don't. I don't let's, let's, let's keep you safe. Yeah, I'll see. You'll get the QR yeah. code. You'll get the link. I'll, I'll make yeah. it nice and safe and easy for you. Right. And then the other question would be when it starts, is it a certain day of the week that it's on and all of that just at a certain time of day? Or is it more, you just get the assignment and you can do it when you have time? Uh, both. So the mm. video, the video will release at a certain time and you'll have the whole week to do that, you know, at your okay. convenience. And then the live sessions are Wednesday mornings. Do you know what time? 8 a.m. Mountain. Okay. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And I even had somebody who was willing to do this at 5 a.m. in his time zone. I was like, that is some commitment. <laughs> oh, isn't that something? Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, Maria. Hope to see you in the program. I just think, I think this sounds really exciting. And especially, you know, having done the speak up to level up training before, I think having the pods and opportunities to kind of, you know, or, or even Sandra, like what you were talking about with your group who's reading and discussing Jamie's book, having those opportunities to connect with other people and, you know, hear their takeaways, or if you didn't understand something or it didn't resonate with you, that opportunity to reflect on, you know, and hear about it from someone else, I think is so valuable. So I'm, I'm really excited for this opportunity. Thanks for sharing. Awesome. Yay. I hope to, I hope to see you Savannah. It'd be, it, yeah, it's so great. And you're exactly right. I mean, hearing different perspectives is, is eye-opening. And I mean, I've been studying this for years at this point and I still hear different perspectives. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I never, I never thought of that. Very exciting. Sandra, do you feel a little bit better about your PQ score? I do. It wasn't at 27. So that makes me feel slightly better. <laughs> what um, is your sage voice telling you? <laughs> it's telling me to take a deep breath. Yeah, I'm okay. Um, my my question, so I'm actually going back and working on a master's in accounting right now. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know how often this is provided. Like I started seven weeks ago, so I'm just not sure about managing my time mm -hmm. uh, right now <laughs> with all of that. So that was my question. Here, here's what I would suggest. I don't know. I don't have the next date of when this will be open. It oftentimes, uh, and Savannah and Gaylene, I think you can attest to this. What I often hear about my programs 
is someone will say, I don't know if I have time. And then you're in it and you say, Ooh, now I realize I didn't not have time to do this, not to use a double neg negative, but I'm going to let that go. Cause my stickler, she can stay over there. So what I would, I would just, would share with you is that if you get in it and you're like, I just, it's, I'm overwhelmed. I can't do it. Then we'll, I'll, I'll make it good by you. We'll figure out a way to put you in a future session instead. Uh, but I would say if you're curious and you're interested, sign up right now and let's see how it goes. Okay. I refer to one of my mantras, which is I'm doing this for me. I uh, love it, Gaylene. Yes. <laughs> which you have written and hung up in your office, right? I do. I have several mantras up there and I have a lot of lot of things from Silua up there that I look up every single day. Well done, my friend. Well done. Gaylene, any questions from you? No. Okay. And we'll we'll talk about this too, because I know you've got uh the three pillars and I've got I've got an idea I want to run past you. So sounds good. Alrighty, team. Well, I hope you take me up on the opportunity. Um, also, this can be really good to invite in a team member. Uh, the more who know about it and are speaking the language, the more the power and the momentum grows. So I, you have my email address. I'll send you a follow-up email with the slides and the links. Uh, thank you so much for being here. This definitely fuels my sage today. And so I'm deeply honored and appreciative for you in that regard. So have a have an empowered day, everyone, and I hope to see you inside the PQ experience.